move, so I woke up this morning and decided to go book shopping. And even though I live in Portland, I wanted to check out some of the towns around here. And so I did a bit of a drive and um, book shopping all in one, and I visited quite a few bookstores, uh, seven in total. So I have, I think, the, the biggest book haul I've ever done on this channel. Um, I don't normally splurge. Um, <laughs> to this magnitude, but it was a lot of fun, and I don't regret it one little bit. So, uh, let's get right into the books. Um, I, first books I got were Maggie Steve Rodder's Call Down the Hawk and Mr. Impossible. I didn't find this in hardcover. I would have loved to, but I have this, they're, you know, they're the same size, at least, and, um, that's really fine. So there's that. This book just came out. This is book two in the Dreamer Trilogy. And I read this one, but I for sure want to reread it before um, I get to this one. And this is um, a trilogy that's after her uh, Raven Cycle um, series that um, follows a group of friends in like small town Virginia and like Blue, Blue Ridge Mountain area, which that setting alone like sold me on the series because um, I love that area. I grew up right near there, so I could just like vividly imagine like a whole. Setting. And then, but then also like the cast of characters are great as well. Like just the friendship and the bond that they have are just just great. And so um, looking forward to diving into this uh, series. And then I have um, Catherine Mansfield's uh, The Garden Party and Other Stories. And I remember this cover um, being talked about by a booktuber years ago. And I can't remember her channel name, but she lives in New Zealand. New Zealand. And, um, oh, <laughs> she's, she's it's completely blanking, but maybe some of you know who I'm talking about. She's like an um, artist and she designs book covers. And this is one that she herself designed. And um, I've been wanting to read Catherine Mansfield ever since I saw this cover years ago. And so I saw this one, I, I just had to pick it up because this is the exact edition that I want. I've, um, I don't know how many bookstores I've browsed through. And whenever I get to the M's, I'm like, okay, let me see if this book is here. And it, it never has been, but I got lucky today. Then I have uh, Mark Twain. Uh, this is a collection from the Library of America, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Life in the Mississippi, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, and Puddinhead Wilson. So I've read two of the four, um, the popular, you know, more well-known like Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn, but um, I love these editions. Um, they don't, they're like acid-free, I think is what it's called. Like they don't um, stain, they're not see-through. That's really good like quality paper. And it comes with uh, bookmarks. I can find it here. They all come with a bookmark. And it has uh, cloth binding and like nice end papers. And so like these are like long lasting editions. And so whenever I see one of these um, about like someone's collection that I like, I always pick it up. And I have a I think at least one more, if not two <laughs> more, in my haul here of these editions. Because they're they're kind of pricey. I think well, not really, but I think you're around like know what they retail for like 30 40 dollars I could be totally wrong but this one I paid 15 <laughs> so like all the ones I got were like 10 15 dollars so yeah there's that we got one bag down I have a million more to go um then I have my cat sit McGee uh, by Willie Morris and I have um I think from the same store a couple of months ago I got my dog Skip which is by the same author. And I think that one's more popular than this one because there's like a movie made after that one. I still have yet to see the movie, but I have read the book. And so this is um, the story about his cat and his writing um, and the story about the dog, like a well-loved like companion throughout his whole childhood. Like I remember reading about how um, he would play football with the dog and the dog would like, come, like, the dog was like watching on sidelines of him playing. He would like join up the team and there were all those friends were so happy to have a dog join and uh, little stories like that so I am looking forward to this one and I love this cover and I really was having a cat like I have Fable here and she is for sure enough <laughs> for me but I had um two cats for um quite a long time and but yeah I, I, can, I can you know rem reminisce on uh having a cat and then let's see what else do I have here um the creation and appeal to save life on earth by E.O. Wilson and this author was on my mind after not after, but like when I was seeing these, because Library of America recently did a collection of E.O. Wilson, and I haven't seen that yet, but I saw this one, and so I paid like a dollar for it, and um, there's lots of little illustrations here on um, animals and insects, so yeah, fantastic to know, so I haven't read anything by this author, 
Um, I then have um, The Odyssey by Homer. And I've actually owned this copy before. It has like deftled edges. It's a really nice um, floppy edition with um, nice artwork. And I've read this, but I need to reread it because like the first time I read through it, I kind of like, I don't know, I didn't like fully immerse myself in it. And I, um, yeah, this is for sure I need to reread. And I got rid of my copy when I moved because like, oh, you know, it's a classic. It's going to be on my Kindle, no problem. But I would like to have a copy on my shelves to like probably, I'm sorry to get a bunch of noise. She's just going to town. Um, <laughs> with her little bone here, because, um, with all this book shopping, I, uh, it was gone for quite a while, so she's, like, glued to my side right now, <laughs> because with me working from home, like, she's never, like, my, my previous dog, Tucker, he was just used to me being gone, you know, like, eight hours a day, like, I'm sure, like, everyone else's pets are as well, but she has been, like, I don't know, spoiled in a way, with not having, you know, me apart from her for more, like, an hour or two. Um, but she did really well, um, at home, so, yeah, but then now she's like, yeah, no, you're not, I'm, I'm keeping you in my sight, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> Let's see, I then have The Homing Instinct, Meaning and Mystery in Animal Migration by Bern Heinrich, and this is an author I really like, and so whenever I see one of his books, um, I always get them, and this one is the subject I'm really interested in, like, you know, migration and all that kind of things, and you have those birds, like, they have really small brains, but they're just, they're really smart, and so, yeah. There's that. Um, I then have Master and Commander by Patrick O'Brien. This is a book I read, I think, like, I don't know, like a quarter or 25% of. But um, it really does um, not, I don't know, give you much lead into the story. Like, it's kind of like, like throw you in there and expect you to know or, you know, learn as you go along on, like, the Navy um, maritime kind of language. So, yeah, <laughs> now that I know what I'm going to get into, um, hopefully I can, you know, actually get through this. Because I, um, I see these books all the time. I know it's a huge, long series, and um, I don't read a lot of this kind of um, book. But I'm hoping, you know, to like it, and then I'll have, like, a million more <laughs> of these to read. Um, I did have a collection of uh, Janet Oaks, uh, Jeanette Oaks, When Breaks the, a Canadian West series, uh, When Breaks the Dawn, When Hope Springs New, and When Falls the Heart. And um, I've read this series before, but this has been like, I don't know, like 10 years ago or something. Um, this is like a Christian fiction um, frontier story um, way up, um, I think in Edmonton, like past that, if, if I remember correctly. Um, like this woman goes from the East Coast to um, the Canadian West right when it was getting uh, started. And she uh, befriends uh, like a male human, or what's it called? Like a, what do they... Uh, you know, it's a police up there. <laughs> I can't, I, I'm blanking on how what you call it. But yeah, I saw these like they're matching editions, and yeah, I haven't read this story like I was saying like I don't know like 10, 15, 15 years, something like a, something like that. And so I'm looking forward to this one. I don't read a ton of Christian fiction, but this is one of the first um, authors that I have read. Because I think she's like kind of like a talking about like pioneers. Like she was a pioneer of the Christian fiction genre. And so yeah, let's see what I make of that one. I then have A Saint's Blood by um, Sebastian de Castell. This is the Great Coat series of book three. I have book one on my shelf. Now book three, I just need book two. And I haven't actually started this series yet. I have been reading his YA series of Spellbinder, Spellcaster, something like that. And I've read a couple of those. Um, but I haven't read his adult series yet. So like maybe once I get book two, and I'll have like at least the first three, then I can dive in uh, to them there. It is, like, at least with his YA series, like, there's lots of humor in there, it's a great storytelling, and if I remember correctly, when this, this cover doesn't have, um, I mean, a, this author picture is just a, a normal bland picture, but I think the other copy that I have has a really, like, like swashbuckling, like, piratey, um, kind of picture. I then have The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. This is another book I read a long time ago, but these were all, like, I got these books at, like, a library sale, so it's, like, 50 cents each, so, like, this is a really nice edition, and, um, I haven't read in a while, so yeah. <laughs> I can always do it with one of her books every now and then. And then the last book I have was uh, is, uh, Campaigning with Grant by Forrest Porter. And this is one, looks like this is the library book sale, like I was mentioning, but this one, along with another book, was like buy one, get one free. And so there were 50 cents, 25 cents each. Like, I was just perusing the shelves, and this one was on there. And um, I've read a couple of Grant biographies before. And I've read um, about him in the different, like, military history books. So um, this one was, like, intriguing to me. And this, um, I think, includes, like, his recollections uh, from when he was a soldier 
I mean, it's like first hand account, like maybe like letters and, and whatnot. So, um, yeah, so we'll get this one sooner rather than later since I um, just read another Civil War book. Uh, let's see. And I can't even remember the title of it. I'm sitting here looking, <laughs> looking at my notes. I think it was an ebook. I think it was an ebook. Like, I don't know. Like, when I see the, I don't always pay attention to the covers because, you know, I'm not looking at the covers. I just open the book book and it automatically goes to where I'm at. <laughs> but anyway, I, I recently read a Civil War book, so um, if it's all in my mind, then um, hopefully I can get to this one and, you know, connect the dots more since it's, like, fresh, more fresh in uh, my memory. Okay, let's see. Uh, we'll do these next. <laughs> Talk about war books. I have a Rick Atkinson, The British Are Coming, The War for America, Lexington to Princeton, uh, 1775 to 1777. This is volume more of the Revolution Trilogy, and I have two of his other books, um, the, uh, An Army at Dawn, uh, there's no cover on this one, but, um, and all those books are <laughs> pretty big, but, um, this is a book that came out, I think in 2019, so it's been on my mind for quite a while, and I've actually borrowed it from the library a couple times, but I haven't read it, so now that I have the copy on my shelves, again, you know, hopefully it'll bring it to my attention more, and I will get to it. I did have, um, these I found, um, this is a special book I found at the um, Little Free Libraries in the neighborhood. So I have um, Stormy Haven by Elizabeth Goddard. This is a love-inspired suspense. These are like um, made by Harlequin. And I've read a couple love-inspired. These are like Christian-based. Um, so there's like, it's all, all like clean stories. And um, so I really like the cover here. And yeah, the title just, just drew me in. And so if it's free, then yeah, I'm going to give this a shot. Um, I then have Karen Hess's um, The Music of Dolphins. And I mentioned before a couple of times, Karen Hess is one of my favorite um, children's writers because um, she wrote um, Out of the Dust. And so I've actually read this one before, but when I saw the title, I was like, okay, I need to give it a reread. Like a couple of these other books that I've uh, picked up. And this is about a little girl who um, she is raised by dolphins. And so she kind of like speaks their language like the music of dolphins she's she like knows their lingo <laughs> and so when she goes to um be like reacclimated to being around humans she has to like adapt to learning their like not like i think if i remember probably, i don't know if she learned their language or she knew it but like she's in, intermingling her english with the dolphin sounds i can't exactly remember but it's a very interesting and a little bit kind of a bizarre story but when you're reading it it makes sense and it, it works <laughs> I then have um, The Door in the Wall by Margaret D'Angela, Angeli, and this is a Newbery Award medal winner. And so, when, again, whenever I see these Newbery uh, winners, I always pick them up because I'm reading uh, through them. And I have uh, Debbie May Comer's Denim and Diamonds. This is two novels, and I'm not sure which two it is. Um, Denim and Diamonds and a um, Mil military Match by Patricia Davis. So it says two nine novels, but Debbie maybe was um, big name. Her, her name is in uh, large print, but then it has a story about her. I've never I've never read Patricia Davis before, but I'm guessing it's a cowboy story with the cowboy hat right there. Um, and I always like reading a Debbie maybe somewhere. And so I'm guessing if Patricia Davis is um, in this collection, then maybe she has similar writing. So I have a new author to follow. And then let's see. And then there's next to my last. Oh, here's one more. Of the free little free library, this is a memory away by Melinda Curtis. This is a heartwarming Harlequin story, and so the heartwarming are the clean stories, but they're not Christian based. And Melinda Curtis, I read one of her other books. Um, I can't remember the name <laughs> the name of it. Uh, it's, it's a, Christ, a Christmas wish, something like that. It was a Christmas story, and then she's like, it was a little novella, and then now like um, I think it's like book two was out, I believe, in that series, and so. Yeah, I know I liked her writing, and so when I saw this, I just snatched it right up. And then going back to my bookstore uh, picks, I have a Willa Cather's Stories, Poems, and Other Writings. And this is the Library of America edition, but um, I don't. it didn't come with a cover. And I, I've seen some of these in the stores where they're just in, like, the box set. And I think it's, like, if you sign up for Library of America, then you get, like, a, I don't know what their subscription is, like, like, once a month or something like that. You'll get editions in the slip cover, but it won't have like that wrap around um, cover. And so again, this one has the uh, free bookmark, and the stories in this one include. Let's see, I think it's her short stories and not her novel. Because I think there's another book in it by her 
in the Library of America um, edition. So yeah, this is uh, Uncollected Stories, um, Youth and Bright Medusa short story collection, and I think there's also some reviews and essays, and um, she has a essay or a review on Mark Twain, so that'll be interesting to read with um, the other Mark Twain that I have here. And then she has a couple introductions to um, novels and reviews, so yeah. This isn't her main, um, you know, like my Antonia, my Antonia, Antonio, Antonia, uh, <laughs> you know, that her like more, more well known books. So when I find that in this edition, then I'll have like a nice little set here. I'm running out of room. Let's see. Put it over here, and then I have um, the Pegnitz Pegnitz uh, Junction. This is by Mavis Gallant, and this is a novella and five short stories. I was just in a short story mood, and um, I've never. Um, read anything by her, but I've heard that she's uh, really good, so I wanted to give him a shot. This is the common themes of um, an array of Europeans, mostly German, are trying to piece together, uh, <laughs> are trying to pick up the pieces of their confused lives after World War II. The scene and time in which the stories are set allow Gallant to explore characters whose lives are fragmented, lonely, and who live in a world that seems impersonal and sometimes hostile. Then going to this other bag right here. I have, um, let's see, it's a Smithson the Smithsonian Book of National Wildlife Refugees by Eric J. Dolan. And I don't normally pick up these, like, large, like, coffee table kind of books, but this is really, really cheap, and so I was like, and I, I really love the topic, and so, um, I can <laughs> share some pictures here. I, I, ha I couldn't pass it up. And I just, I love, um, reading about animals, and so this has like tons of like glossy pictures. Then, uh, yeah, this for sure will be with a well loved read. Here, then I have, um, <laughs> do you hear that? It's like my book's falling down on the large pile here. So, let's see if I had I guess another one of these somewhere. Did I have another? I got one other. So, I have another Maggie Steve Otter. This is the um, the Raven second series I was mentioning, The Dream Thieves and The Raven King. So this is book two and four, so I just need uh, one and three. <laughs> and I saw a couple like um, like the Sloppy Trade Paperback, but because I got these two, I want to find the others in the um, square hardcover edition. Now Fable's all interested in what I have here with this wrestling bag. And I'll show you the bag in a second. Um, let's see. I then have The Sea Around Us by Rachel Carson. I read this book years ago, but it was like a, it was a book I ordered, I think it was like Barnes and Noble or Amazon, but it was covered in stickers, and it was just a mess, because you never know what you're going to get. Sorry, she's like intrigued with all these um, bags, and I'm sure have like tons of smells. Um, but, so yeah, it was just a, like a really battered copy, and so I saw this, and I, had, I read it, and I got rid of it, because I, I knew it wasn't a copy I wanted to keep, but I loved the story. Um, and this is, because she's m most known for Silent Spring. But this is all about like the history and like, evolution, like um, like the, the evolving story of the ocean, and um, you know what all has been done to it, and the different animals. Hi, Fable. The different animals <laughs> that have um, <laughs> that have uh, you know resided there, and um, <laughs> hi. <laughs> like I said, she has missed me today. Um, she <laughs> is not used to being alone. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I have this one. Okay. Um, I did have Flat Rock Journal, A Day in the Ozark Mountains, and this is by, oh, there isn't on here. Oh, Ken, Ken Carey, it's a little one right here. And I, um, I've never read this author, I haven't ever heard about it, but on the back, the little blurb, um, the review is by Sue Hubble, and um, I've read her, and I really liked it. So if she was like, giving this a favorable, favorable review, then I wanted to um, give it a try, and she wrote a book about the Ozark Mountains. And so, yeah, I've never been there, but I've always wanted to visit the Ozarks. Um, is there any pictures in here, or is it just the cover? Yeah, there's no pictures. But yeah, I really like the cover as well. It's like a cave with like the fall colors in the background. And then, let's see, I think, do I just have a big box set? No, I have one more. Okay, so I have uh, Flannery O'Connor, and this is, again, a Library of America um, edition. This is Wise Blood, um, A Good Man is Hard to Find, The Violent Bared Away, Everything That Rises Must Converge, and Essays and Letters. And so this doesn't include her um, short stories. And I want to get, like, the complete short story um, collection. I think I own that as well. <laughs> I did a move or something like that, and then I got rid of it. But, yeah, if I find that along with this, then I'll have, like, book one and two, like, the Willa Cather 
or um, the Mark Twain or, or what have you. Um, so yeah, I have those. Okay, so now into the box that I have here. Let me get it out. <laughs> um, so I found the Little House on the Prairie box set. Um, it's like the old, like I think it was 1971 edition. And so these were all in like really good condition, um, which was like surprising. Like there, um, there was no tears or writing like, or anything like that. And so, um, yeah, I was very happy to find this. Um, let me get back in the box here. Um, but along with um, having Laura's stories, I also um, found quite the haul here of um, – the, uh, <laughs> uh, all of like her other family, uh, like ancestry, uh, stories. Let me move this so he's not chewing on plastic. But I have the Martha years, I have Charlotte years, and uh, Caroline years, and Rose years. <laughs> and so, um, ever since I was uh, participating in the Lower House, the Lower House on the Prairie Readathon, that, um, Lizzie, I mean, Elizabeth over Lizzie Faye Love's books were hosting, and she was talking about how. A lot of these were out of print and hard to find. And so since I've been going to the bookstores, they've been on my mind. Like since I got this um, box set right here, I was like, well, let me see if this store has that. What else do they have? And so they had quite the collection. And um, and so Lizzie was talk Elizabeth was talking about how these are like you know, out of print and they're hard to find. So they're very expensive online. <laughs> the only ones that are like affordable are the Rose Years, which are still in print. But uh, the Charlotte, Martha, and... Um, Caroline years, which is like, like her, Rose is her daughter, then you have Caroline the mother, and then um, Mar Charlotte is the great, no, is the grandmother, and then Martha is the great grandmother. Um, so I've gotten, I have a couple more on my shelf, but I have the um, little, little House in the Highlands, this is the Martha years, book one in that series, and then I found, I think this is book two and four, or two and three, so I need two more in this series, and this is the Caroline years. And then I, I mean, I'm sorry, that's the Charlotte years. And then I have, um, for, um, Caroline, I found these three. I have Little Clearing in the Woods on top of Concord Hill and across, um, across the Rolling River. So along with the two others I have, I think I'm only missing one or, I think I'm only missing one book from this series. So I, I, once I have the whole collection, I, if I can ever find them all, then I can do a complete, you know, read of them. And then I have, for Rose, I have, um, in the land of the big red apple, uh, on the other side of the hill, new dawn on Rocky Ridge, on the banks of the bayou, and Bachelor Girl. <laughs> so this is all, wait, I have one more, there's one more book. Um, this is On the Way Home. Uh, this is Laura Ingalls Wilder's um, story of um, a diary of a trip from South Dakota to Mansfield, Missouri in 1894. And this is considered, I think, like book eight in the series or something like that it's like you know after her series um was published like later on they um tried to get, like, gather all of her other writing uh to make some books so i have i have what's that from here and this is her story of her letter of um visiting san francisco um her daughter rose was living there and so she went to like the world's fair and so um yeah these are like her little like letters or diaries that they pulled from so those are all the books um, that I've bought today <laughs> or stashed up today at the Little Free Library. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to be doing any book shopping for quite a while. Like funny enough, I've um, already filmed I, what I thought was going to be my May book haul. Um, but yeah, I am for sure going on a book buying ban, which I do, don't, I've, ne I've, I've never <laughs> done. But um, <laughs> I'm going to run out of room, which is crazy because I just recently got this shelf. I mean, yes, I have one shelf, but I thought it would just take me longer than this to fill up. But I mean, like living here in like Portland and the Oregon area, like it's such a bookish community. And I feel like there's a bookstore or a free library or something. <laughs> Not on every corner like a Starbucks, but yes, it is very readily available to me. And yeah, I need to hold, rein it in, rein it in a bit. Um, <laughs> let me know if you read any of these books or what you thought, um, if you think if you read these books and what your thoughts on them are, or if there's any books like um, that I'll haul you think I really need to get to um, soon, then let me know. Um, thanks. I'll see you soon, book tube.